Today's blog is on how to make facelift incisions virtually invisible, even with close inspection. The trick is several fold. First of all, the closure has to be tension free. What tension free means is that there's no gap where the skin edges are pulled together under tension or tightness because it can relax and stretch out and cause a widened scar. So the way to make this tension free is that after you've lifted the deep tissues, the excess skin is trimmed perfectly so that there's no pull on it. People think that when they pull their fingers back that a facelift is just a pulling action where you're lifting up the sides of the skin and it actually has nothing to do with the skin. It's a deep tissue lift where the skin falls back naturally. The second uh, technique that is important is a curvilinear incision, which means there are no straight lines. Our eye has ability to see straight lines, and when we see a straight line, we think there um, is something abnormal because nature does not have straight lines that has curves. So every little nuanced portion of my incision is curved. That is the second principle is no straight lines. The um, Third principle is to hide the incision along areas where there are already lines. For example, underneath the tuft of hair, um, in, on, in the front of the in front of the ear, along the uh, behind the tragus, which is the area when you press down to close your ear from listening to someone talk, um, around the back of the ear, along the crease of the ear, and a short distance down the back side. So the next principle is hiding the incisions along borders that are hard to detect. Another principle is um, making the incisions relatively short, shorter, I should say. If you make the incision in front of the hair along the temporal area, that incision does not heal well. In addition, if you make the incision low on the back of the ear, you can't wear your hair up, which makes that bad. Another problem is if you try to make the incision into the hair bearing area, whether in the front or the back of the ear, you can lose hair and then you look artificial, older, and then I've got to do a hair transplant for you. Fortunately, I never remove hair when I'm doing a hair, uh, excuse me, when I'm doing a facelift. So shorter incisions, but people always say, can you make my incision super, super short, like nothing behind the ear, et cetera. Well, if you're doing a lift where there's a lot of extra skin, where is that extra skin going? If you, it, it will bunch. So you have to have enough of an incision that you can actually access the neck, but also remove the extra skin that's there as well. So without bunching. Another principle is what's known as a trichophytic closure. So what a trichophytic closure is, is that along the um, back of the hairline, as well as underneath the, the, the tuft of the, the temple, right near the ear, I actually intentionally bevel my blade to cut one row of the hair follicles. That allows the hairs to go through the scar to make that even harder to see when your hairs are lifted up. Um, another principle that I have is to leave stitches in longer behind the ears uh, because the back, in the back of the ear, the, those incisions want to stretch out. So when I use a chromic suture that dissolves by itself after one or two weeks, uh, it heals far better and makes it very, very hard to see. And that's another principle uh, of, uh, of good scar camouflage. Um, another thing is the tragus area, which is right in front of the ear. I do a lot of work to thin that down so that the contour looks natural and looks very, and, and looks appropriate. When you're below the tragus, right below that area, again, the tragus is the area you press down to close your ear when you want to shut out the noise of the world. Um, you need to, you need to go just uh, in and out called a hockey stick. What that does is it allows that it not to look like a, a straight line going down in front of the ear, and that's important. I've actually actually made a modification I call the M modification, where the distance between the bottom of the tragus and the bottom of the earlobe, there's a slight bend that, that mimics the curvature there and further makes an area that would have been straight not straight. Um, th for men, uh, the trick is to make a gauge, are you going to go pre-tragal or post-tragal? If they've got, they wear a beard, I can, I'll act, and they refuse to cut, shave the beard, and they always want to have the beard, and you don't want the beard moved back, then you're going to hide that incision on the back of the beard so it's, it's, it's 
uh, not move, the beard does not move backwards onto the ear. Um, if they've got thin skin, sparse hair, the skin looks natural, would look natural on the ear, I can do a post-tragal incision, which is what my standard is for females hidden inside the ear. These complexities go beyond the scope of this short blog, but I just wanted to express to you some of the techniques in making uh, facelift incisions virtually undetectable, even close range.